questions 43 to 46. So the very first sentence of the first paragraph gives us our first rule, and that is inhaling air leads to water being added to the air and also heat probably because, of course, as long as you're inhaling air which is less than 37 degrees, which is uh, body temperature, then uh, you will be adding heat uh, energy to the air. So that's more often than not, let's say. And so uh, presumably the air is going to the lungs and there the saturation is such that there's 100% relative humidity. I put a little asterisk there because uh, Acer did. <laughs> they put an asterisk for the word saturated and then they defined it as being relative humidity of 100%. And then in their first question, they give us that body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. So um, that happens because you should ideally take a little review of the questions before you read the passage, just to orient yourself and also to uh, minimize the chance that you will be distracted um, by any additional or unnecessary information. So we have our first rule. And then the next sentences gives us our, our next rule. And that's when air is exhaled, the body will reclaim some of the water. So water is going to be removed from the air before it goes into the environment. And the body is able to do this by cooling the air and reclaiming it on the surfaces of, for example, of the nasal passages. And of course, you have experience with this. Uh, you're familiar with the changes in the saturation of air and water and temperature changes. For example, uh, if you take a hot shower on a cool day, then um, you realize the, the air in the, uh, in the bathroom or, or washroom becomes saturated with water and therefore it will condense on cooler surfaces, metal, m marble, mirrors, any cooler surface that's there, it's going to condense and so if there are more surfaces in the same size, uh, you know, bathroom, then you expect that there's going to be more water condensing on those surfaces as there's more exposure to areas that have uh, a lower temperature. And likewise, the inside of your freezer, um, the inside of your freezer develops frost more often than not or, or quite often. And so that frost inside your freezer is caused by uh, water that's in the air, in the ambient um, uh, air, and when you open the freezer each time there is some condensation on the surfaces of the freezer and that condensation uh, turns to uh, to ice eventually and frost and so of course it's this um, is even worse if there is some problem with the seal of the freezer then ambient air will leak in slowly and gradually and then uh, each time some of that water that's contained in the ambient air is going to uh, cool, uh, condense, and then uh, freeze. So there is an ex a general experience with the fact that uh, cooler surfaces, cooler temperatures cannot retain water as much as warmer surfaces. Okay, let's get to question 43. So human body temperature 37 degrees so we know that um, according to inhaling air we know that there's going to be equilibration of body temperature uh, but the inhaled air is at 25 so we're starting with 25 degrees and 25 percent relative humidity and we're going to end up with by adding water and heat we're going to end up with 37 degrees um, and 100 percent uh, relative humidity. So this is what we're expecting is going to happen. So then it's just a matter of uh, let's look at the graph. And so uh, just paying attention to the graph, first we look at bef the before situation. So in the before situation with the inhaled air, we're going to look at 25 degrees on the graph. And now we have to be very careful to look at the dashed line of relative humidity of 25% and then read what the water in the air will be. So the water in the air will be at 25% looking very closely. It'll be approximately 5 milligrams per liter. So um, in the before situation, we're going to have 5 milligrams per liter. 
And then afterwards, uh, once the water and the heat has been added, and now we're up to 37. And uh, so 30, so I'm looking on, on the graph at air temperature. I look at uh, between 30 and 40, there's a line obviously between 30 and 40 is the line for 35. So um, I'm more or less looking in between 35 and 40, and then I'm moving up to this solid black line. And there it seems to intersect more or less uh, at uh, 45 uh, milligrams per liter. So, so after it's going to be uh, 45, milligram per liter. So this makes a difference of 40 milligrams per liter. Okay, so uh, that gives us uh, 43. That's answer C. The only thing, of course, it's, uh, you know, relatively easy. It's just make sure you're looking at the proper graph and uh, you are estimating uh, within reasonable. So that's 43. Moving on to question 44. Which of the following statements is correct? Okay, so we go uh, through each one. The first one is, as temperature ambient air increases, the humidity has less of an effect. Oh boy, no, humidity, it's the exact opposite. The uh, humidity has more of an effect on the amount of water lost in the exhaled hair, air. Because if we're looking at the air that's going to be exhaled, it requires cooling in the nasal passages in order to uh, recover some of that water. Now, if there is no cooling, you can't recover. So for example, if you exhaled in air that had the same temperature as your body, 37 degrees, where's the cooling? How do you reclaim the water, just like the mirror, metal, marble, <laughs> and uh, the inside of your freezer? How do you reclaim that water? You can't because there's insufficient cooling. So. Um, a is incorrect as written. B, as the temperature of ambient air increases, its humidity has, well, it would actually have, again, more of an effect on the amount of water added to inhaled air. Think about it. If you have temperature increase, then the humidity as well, then what happens is that there is less of a difference in terms of the inhaled air and the lung, and therefore less water needs to be added. So they're not saying whether or not the difference is going to be higher or lower in terms of the amount of water being added. That's not being specified. But th we know that there'll be less of a difference because if the humidity is more similar to that of lung, um, because the temperature is more similar, say, for example, uh, higher temperatures are going to be able to have more water uh, contained at that particular temperature. That's what the graph shows us, solid line versus the dashed line. More water can be contained in air at the higher temperatures. So if the inhaled air has a higher temperature um, and therefore it can contain more water uh, at that higher temperature, the difference is less than that with lung and therefore less water would be added. So that is an uh, incorrect statement. And I would also have to say in terms of strategies, again, you know, looking at A and B, they're not exact opposite statements. But when you look at C and D, C and D are opposite statements. They're really saying something opposite to each other. And again, this is a flag because uh, there is a greater chance that uh, a true answer is going to be found among two statements which are in exact opposition than otherwise. It doesn't mean that it's always going to be the case, but there's a greater chance of this. So we see that in answer choices C and D. So then for C, it says uh, less cooling of the air passing through nasal passage during exhalation results in more water being required. Of course, it's the exact opposite. Exhaled air to have water recovered requires cooling, and uh, this can be done in the nasal passages, of course, but uh, the point is that it requires the cooling in order to recover. So more cooling, uh, just like those surfaces in the bathroom or, or wherever else, more cooling of the air passing over the age of uh, nasal passages um, will 
result in more water being recovered. So 44, uh, the answer is D. And I think that this uh, is also confirmed again by the graph, which shows that lower temperature, less water can be contained in the air uh, at lower temperatures. So um, that means that at lower temperatures, more water will condense and turn into the liquid form. And so that uh, permits the reclaiming of the water. And speaking of reclaiming water, a kangaroo rat. So now we have a before situation of uh, at 30 degrees and and 25 percent relative humidity. So we look at uh, 30 degrees. That's easy to find on the graph for the air temperature. And we're only going to look at the graph with the dashed line because that represents 25 percent humidity. And then we go across to water in air and it looks like it's around 8 milligrams per liter. So uh, I'll just put a double line here. So we're at 8 milligrams per liter. And then now in the second situation, we have exhaled saturated air. And saturated uh, means 100% uh, humidity. So now we're going to look at the uh, solid line. And we're looking at the solid line at 27 degrees. Solid line at 27 degrees. Okay, so we easily find 25 degrees. And then 27 degrees is going to be between 25 and 30. So we um, extrapolate more or less in between there. And we look up and it seems like looking at the solid line again seems to be around 28. So we have around 28 uh, milligrams per liter. And so our difference is 20 milligrams per liter and so there's no uh, uh, surprise at the way they chose those numbers and so we see that uh, 45 the answer is a question 46 which one of the following would not not you would circle underline put an asterisk next to that uh, improve heat exchange in the nasal passages and of course in the nasal passages we know there's there's uh, temperature added uh, you know, often, and often there is going to be some measure of uh, cooling. And so it's obvious that having more surface area being presented, just like uh, having more surfaces in the, in the bathroom during a hot shower would make uh, more areas in which you would see condensation of water. Um, so just just like that, you would uh, you would certainly believe that longer nasal passages uh, would improve heat exchange. Um, and the choice B, narrow, yes, that also would improve because uh, that puts the air and the vascular structures in closer proximity, and so the temperature can be modified. Uh, you can you can cool, you can heat, uh, whatever you need to do because, um, you know, obviously if you want to get warm, you can stand by a heater, or if you want to get cool, stand by an air conditioner. Obviously, if you're closer to it, then uh, the effect will be more significant. And so n narrow nasal passages certainly would function uh, to, to improve the situation. Uh, highly folded surfaces. Again, this is an issue of uh, creating increased surface area. The body has so many things with um, highly folded surfaces in order to increase surface area, to increase efficiency. Uh, this is seen in the uh, growth structures of the bowel, the intestines, the small intestines, for example, to increase surface area for absorption, and also the microscopic aspects of the uh, bowel, for example in terms of uh, villi, microvilli, and, and other structures that are also meant to create increased surface area and contact. So this is in many different parts of the human body. And so uh, it, it, it's definitely increasing surface area will increase the, the exchange. And then um, finally, the countercurrent blood flow. So even if you didn't know about countercurrent, because it, it's, uh, it insinuates in the passage that there is a positive effect, um, an evolutionary uh, uh, benefit to uh, heat exchange by having a countercurrent um, blood flow. This is um, insinuated in the, in the passage. So by, by inference, you can say that. But if you wanted to really learn about um, countercurrent uh, in, in the book, bio book three, in the biology section 10.3 has a great 
passage and image, I, I should say, uh, with a description of how that functions. So it is a wonderful way for the body to uh, become more efficient in heat exchange and, and exchange of uh, solutes and, and, and so on, for example, in the nephron. So there's, it's used in many different parts of the body for different reasons. Okay, so those are three really good reasons. And then so A, answer choice A is definitely wrong because uh, it should be long nasal passages which will improve heat exchange because that would increase the surface area. Okay, well that was pretty uh, straightforward. Um, you know, you might uh, want to look at GAMSAT Math 2.2 uh, for dimensional analysis, just doing some calculations, or Chapter 3 in GAMSAT Math for ga uh, graph analysis. And of course, online biology chapter zero, which has lots of graph analysis, and there's a lot of physics videos for graph analysis also on the website. And uh, the counter exchange in 10.3 and bio 12.2 just for the uh, respiratory system.